जय शिष्य गुरु गौरंग गंधार विकगिरी धारी शिष्य राधा विनोर बिहारी जो की जाय श्री गोविंद गोपीनाथ मरण मोहन जो की जाय नित्यल प्रविष्ट विष्णुपार अश्वतर शत शिशुमार भक्ति ग्रंथ नारायण गोस्वामी महाराज शिव गुरुदेव की जाय नित्यल प्रविष्ट विष्णुपार अश्वतर शत शिशुमार भक्ति ग्रंथ वामन गोस्वामी महाराज की जाय नित्यल प्रविष्ट विष्णुपार अश्वतर शत शिशुमार भक्ति ग्रंथ स्वामी महाराज शिल प्रभु पार की जाय नित्यल प्रविष्ट विष्णुपार अश्वतर शत शिशुमार शिल भक्ति रक्षक श्रीधर गोस्वामी महाराज की जाय तदीय शुभ आविर्भाव तिथि की जाय नित्यल प्रविष्ट विष्णुपार अश्वतर शत शिशुमार भक्ति प्रज्ञान केशव गोस्वामी महाराज की जाय नित्यल प्रविष्ट विष्णुपार अश्वतर शत शिशुमार भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी प्रभु पार की जाय नित्यल प्रविष्ट महा भगवत शिल गौर किशोर दास बाबा जी महाराज की जाय नित्यल प्रविष्ट शिल सच्चिदानंद भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर की जाय नित्यल प्रविष्ट वैष्णव सार्वभौम शिल जगन्नाथ दास बाबा जी महाराज की जाय श्री रूपानु गौरी गुरु वर्ग की जाय श्री रूप सनातन भट्ट रघुनाथ श्री जीव गोपाल भट्ट दास रघुनाथ शार्ड गोसाई प्रभु की जाय श्री स्वरूप तामदार राय रामानंदारी श्री गौर प्रसाद वृंद की जाय नाम अचय शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की जाय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री आद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासरी गौर भक्त वृंद की जाय श्री क्षेत्र मंडल गौर मंडल व्रज मंडल मथुर वृंदावन धाम की जाय सर्व अभिष्ट प्रदार्थ गिरिराज महाराज की जाय श्री राधा कुंद श्याम कुंड की जाय श्री मुन देवी गंगा देवी की जाय श्री तुलसी महारानी वृंद देवी की जाय श्री भक्ति देवी की जाय श्री पूनमासी योग माया की जाय श्री गोपेश्वर महादेव की जाय श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाय जाय शिल शिल भक्ति रक्षक श्री रघु गोसाई महाराज की जाय तो देव शुभ आविर्भाव थीत की जाय श्री वीर चंद्र प्रभु की जाय श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाय अनंत कोटि अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जाय समागत गौर भक्त वृंद की जाय श्री निताय गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बोल हरि बोल तो आमी इंग्लिश ही बोलूँगा सब कुछ आम ना एक ऐसा इंग्लिश है हवे हाँ 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 किंतु एक कौन सुबह इंग्लिश That is one of the villagers with us. He's, like that. He's asking me to speak in Bengali. Okay. So, um, let me see all who's there. Hari Bo Rukmini Didi. Dhanabha Pranams. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm just letting you know why I'm starting. Rukmini just heard me say this um, in the previous program. But the reason why I'm starting 15 minutes late is because a very uh, revered Vaishnav Hare Krishna Prabhu, he just came to our place uh, unexpectedly, he just showed up, and so then we were showing him around our place and everything like that, and that took a bit of time, and so then I started the Kirtan program 15 minutes late, so we don't have as much time to read now, but I think what I will do, I, I think I will go live again at maybe 5 p.m. India time to read more from Srila Shri, Shri Bhakti Rakshak Shri Raghu I think. Or maybe later. I don't know. Our, our, um, I'm not sure if you heard, um, were here when I was mentioning this before, but we had a Singhasan made, a Singhasan built, and it is going to be ready this evening. And so I'm going to go and pick it up. So as soon as I bring that back, then I will start a reading about Srila Bhakti, more reading for Srila Srila Goswami because, yeah. Oh, and today is Bahulashtami. For those of you um, here in India, it was yesterday. But I think for those of you in America and other parts of the world, it is today, the appearance day of Radhakunt. And actually, you know, I, I, I was just seeing on the Maya perform last night that there is an official resolution, um, like ISKCON official resolution, that they won't celebrate the appearance of Radhakunt today, but they'll celebrate it another day. Um, I think Chaitra Purnima or something like that. Um, and yeah, that's... Um, but our Acharyas have all said that, that, like our recent Acharyas, 
even during Shula Bhakti Siddhanta, uh, yeah, they, they've said that today is the appearance day of Radhakund. And I remember actually before there was an article put out um, talking about how Bahul. Oh, Hare Krishna. <laughs> There is, a, there is an article put out that mentions that Bahulashtami is um, not not on this day during Kartik. Sorry, that the appearance of Radhakun didn't happen on this day. But um, then a friend of mine, I'm not sure if he wants me to mention his name, but he found all sorts of evidence that it um, that you want to see it just because. Here, I'm gonna sh- show you. I think it's it's um, important. Um, yeah. One second. I I probably should redact his name though, because he wrote this in a personal message to somebody. Um, it was after this article was written. Then he wrote a personal message to the person who wrote the article. Um, and uh, so I'm just going to take out the names, <laughs> and then I can show you. Um, yeah since it was a private message to somebody. I have to get his permission if before I can use his name. But, um, oh, once again, I just got it now. And also today is the disappearance day of a very special Vaishnava, sh- uh, disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Prabhupada, Sri Sujananda Prabhu, um, also known as S. N. Ghosh, who maybe, w- and I, I'd like to read a little bit about him also. Um, one second, let me just open this up in a Word doc. I took out the names, so now, because <laughs> this wasn't a public post. Okay. Am I sharing my screen? Yes, I am. Okay, good. Oh, man, it didn't get the paragraphs. That's so weird. Why did it not get paragraphs? Copy. Huh. That's so strange. Anyways, this is my, my god brother. He wrote this. And it's there's no paragraphs, which is really strange. But anyways, we have something to read. Um... Let me clear the formatting. Let's make this big so you can all see it. Oops, that's too big. Okay. So this is in response to an article that was written, a private response to an article that was written saying that Bahulashtami is not on... Um, yeah. So Dandavat Pranam, I hope you are very well. I thought you would reply. I thought I would reply to your last comments on um, this Madhavananda Prabhu's Facebook post about the appearance day of Sri Radhakund. My reason for doing so is not to, in, I don't know how you say that word, impugn your article, impugn your your article in any way, which I found insightful and greatly appreciated. Rather, it is simply to suggest that the issue is more complex and nuanced than the title of the article assumes. The title of the article is Bahulashtami is not the appearance day of Radhakund. I will use diacritics only where necessary. I agree with you, of course, that Srila Jiva Goswami based his Gopal Champu on the Puranas, especially the Vishnu Purana and Varaha Purana, which he specifically references in Purva chapter 31. The somewhat incidental point I was trying to make is that none of these Puranic sources indicates either directly or indirectly that Arishta Sura was killed in Chaitra. By the way it is worded, from the article at least, in its abridged form, strongly suggests that the Puranas fixed the killing of Arishta and Chaitra. But this is not the case. That then leaves the view of Shijiva, which on its own remains highly significant. Sorry, that leaves the view of Shijiva, which on its own remains highly significant. We know, however, that in the domain of transcendence, there is room for differing perspectives on topics, especially Leela, sometimes with ways to reconcile differences and at other times not. For example, Srimati Radhika is born in, Vishab- in Vishabhanukund and also in Raval. Brahma, the head of our lineage, is in Sakyarati and also in Madhuryarati. 
Shri Jiva explains Sambhogecha some, some Mai and Tattadbhavichatnika in one way, and Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur and Sri Mukunda Das Goswami in somewhat different ways. Thus, Sri Jiva's chronology need not necessarily eliminate every other alternative. All the paragraphs got lost. The killing of Arishta and Srimad Bhagavatam. In your reply, you pointed out to the use of the word kadachid, one day, in the story of Arishta. This is a valid point. The adverb ruptures, um, con I don't know how to say this word, Contin con contin what is that? How do you say that word? Anyways, what is it? It means it's the state of bordering or being in direct contact with something. Contingency. Contingency. In time with the previous chapter. Sorry, the, ad the adverb ruptures con contingency in time with the previous chapter, which occurs in autumn in the Vishnu Purana, Parma Purana, Brahma Purana, and Hari Vangsha. To be sure, Kadachir can mean one day later in autumn, but it can also mean one day at a later time after autumn. In Srimad Bhagavatam, however, no adverb like Kadachir is employed. The chapter just before the story of Arishta, chapter 35, occurs in autumn. We know this from verses 20 to 25, which mention kunda flowers and a gentle breeze. These are classic autumnal features. Kunda flowers do not blossom in spring. Indeed, Sri Jiva Goswami himself makes this point in his Krama Sandarbha, verse 10, 36, 1, then introduces the story of Arishta as follows. Atat tar hyagato goshtam arishto vrishabhanu sura mahim maha kakut kaya kampayan kura vikshatam. Here the adverb ata means now, as a mere con continuative. The adverb tarhi means then, or at that time. In other words, there is no break in continuity here. On the same day of autumn in which chapter 35 occurs, chapter 36 continues, only in the evening. Indeed, the Vishnu Purana infirms that Arishta Sura entered Krishna's village at twilight, as do the other Puranic sources. It would be distinctly odd to use Atatarhi for an event nearly half a year later in Chaitra. Please note that I am not trying to argue against Srila Jiva Goswami here. I am simply setting up an alternative reading that may help explain the tradition of Bahulashtami that continues to today. So far, we have traced this tradition back to 1935, but I believe it is far older. The meaning of Bahulashtami. This brings us now to the central question. Why is the auspicious day of Bahulashtami named that way and why is it praised so highly in the Puranas, such as the verses quoted in Hari Bhakti Vilas and Mathura Mahatma? We may be tempted to treat the word Bahulashtami in a similar way to Bahulavan, namely, like Bahula plus Van, and therefore Bahula plus Ashtami. In fact, the word is made up of Bahula with a short A and Ashtami. One meaning of Bahula is the dark half of a month, Krishna Paksha. This meaning is listed in almost all Sanskrit dictionaries. For example, see Manyar Williams, um, Benfi, Shabda Sagar. Hence, Kartike Bahulashtamyam simply means on the eighth day of the dark half of Kartik. Here, Bahulashtami is a Tatpurush compound expressing a genitive or locative case relationship. Now, why do some translations of this verse add the line Radakun manifested at midnight on the eighth day of the waning moon in the month of Kartik when this does not appear in the Sanskrit? Why is that? Well, actually, it is in the Sanskrit, but as a play on words. The word Bahula has another meaning, one even more important than the dark half of the month. That meaning is born or manifested in the month of Kartik. In the month of Kartik, October, November, the moon is full near Kritika, or I don't know how you say that word. Um, anyways, it's also known as the Seven Sisters. An open star cluster in Taurus. This is how the month derives its name. If you look up Bahula in the Shabda Sagar, for example, it will offer the meaning born under the Pleiades. I don't know how you say that word. 
Most other dictionaries specify the same, often clarifying that this means born in the month of Karthik. This usage is evidenced in Panini's Ashtadhyayi um, 4333. It is also found in the Latya, Latyayan and Mahabharat. That Bahulashtami has traditionally been the appearance day of Sri Radha. Sorry, that Bahulashtami has traditionally been the appearance day of Sri Radha Kund explains why this day is praised so highly. Shrimati Radhika was born on Ashtami, and Krishna was born on Ashtami too. They then appeared as two kundas adjacent to each other that are non-different from their sarups, and they did so again on Ashtami but this time in the holy month of Radha Damodar, or Kartik. Indeed, there is, no, there is no other reason to explain the praise heaped on Ashtami in the dark lunar fortnight, one that has an inter in interior meaning of born or manifest in Kartik. Generally, an Ashtami in the dark lunar fortnight is deemed inauspicious, the exception is Krishna Janmashtami, and someone born on that day is destined to be a thief. True of Krishna. <laughs> History of Bahulashtami. And the reason why I'm reading this is because now it's becoming an official thing for all of ISKCON, like their official um, their official statement that Bahulashtami is not the appearance day of Radha Kunda and they're not going to celebrate it on that day. And um, actually, my, my Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Brigand Keshav Goswami Maharaj, if you see his Prabhandavali, when when people he there are a uh, few articles long 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 articles um regarding different titis and um like when people were following a titi on a on a wrong day and um like not according to our vaishnav tradition and like that and so this is a topic that Param Parm gurudev was very strongly fight against um and so i think i just thought it would be appropriate to give some evidence why actually Bahulashtami, which our Acharyas, many of our recent Acharyas, all say that today is the appearance day of Radha Kunda. I'm giving the Praman for that. And this article has never been published. Um, it's It was just a private email written to the devotee who wrote this article, first saying this. Um, and so that's why I'm not telling the author's name. I have to get permission from him and then I can make it public. But anyways, I just thought it would be helpful for everybody to... Um, yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay, continue on. History of Bahulashtami. <clears throat> oh, one second. Let me just open up the comments so I can see this. Oh, oops. <laughs> Thanks, Rukmini. I, I, I got this few words wrong. Okay. History of Bahulashtami. It is clear that the verses quoted in Hari Bhakti Vilas and Mathura Mahatma formed part of a cluster of verses glorifying Sri Radhakund. Maybe there's a verse out there that explains Bahulashtami in, a very, in very clear terms. The problem, of course, is that there are many uh, res recensions of the Puranas. Is that how you say it? Recensions? Yeah. There are many recensions of the Puranas. And therefore, even the verses quoted by the Goswamis from the Puranas are difficult to trace and may well have been lost. What does survive to this day, however, is the living tradition. As the, sh as the harmonist, Sri Sajantoshini, volume, uh, I don't know, I'm bad with Roman, uh, Roman numerals, but that issue of uh, Sajantoshini, number five, November 7th, 1935, states, almost a century ago, this holy titi is honored by the Gaudiya Vaishnavas as on this sacred titi, Sri Radhakund made appearance in Vrindavan. Okay, so this is published during Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasadi Thakur's time in his magazine. Srila Bhakti Brigand Keshav Goswami Maharaj, the sannyas guru of Srila Prabhupada and one of the earliest disciples of Srila Saraswati Thakur, considered Bahulashtami to be the appearance day of Sri Radhakund and Shamakund. He was present at the celebration of Bahulashtami in 1935. Srila Bhakti Viranta Narayan Goswami, who continued the Rajmandal Purikama tradition from the 1940s to 2010, writes in his Rajmandal Purikama guide, these two kundas manifested at midnight on Krishnashtami, the eighth day of the dark moon in the month of Kartik. Therefore, thousands of people bathe here at midnight on this day, which is known as Bahulashtami. 
Likewise, Srila Bhakti Dait Madhav Gosai Maharaj considered Bahulashtami to be the appearance day of Sri Radhakund and Shamakund, a conception that has been expressed by one of his leading disciples, Srila Bhakti Vigyan Parati Gosai Maharaj. Similarly, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Srira Gosai Maharaj appears to have regarded this day in that way too. And this is reflected in the Panjika of Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat today. I would like to confirm this. Uh, I would like to confirm this. Significantly, he too was present at the celebration of Bahulashtami in 1935, something specifically mentioned in the, in the Harmonist issue. Bridgevasi Prabhu, you may well not agree with all the points I have tried to make here, but I, I hope you have at least found them interesting. Also, I hope they may, they may make the, the case that this is a nuanced topic and one that has perhaps not yet been exhausted. I have, I have very a great pre appreciation for your writings and research contributions. In your reply on Facebook, you mentioned an article that you had written on Srila Jiva Goswami and his chronology. Could you possibly... Re Anyways, that's, um, that's the end of it. But um, yeah, I just wanted to share that. Um, because I thought it's important to, um, yeah, see all sides. <laughs> all right. So um, now, before we before we read about Shila Bhakti Rakshak Shira Gosai um I, I I haven't prepared anything in advance right now, but I thought maybe um, we could read a little bit about Sujananda Prabhu, who. But let me just find it. Um, a life of devotion. Okay, just opening up the book. Okay, I'm sharing my screen again. Rukmini Didi, if there are any particular parts of the book that, because um, this is Rukmini's uh, and Rukmanjari Didi's grand, great grandfather, disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, and it was, it's his appearance, disappearance day right now in America. It was yesterday for us here. Um, find, okay, Suja, no, no, I'll write in Gosh, I think I'll get, wait, no, Suja, no, I'll get it, there, okay, okay, so at other times also his god brothers used to visit Srila Bhakti Bhavad Puri Goswami Raj in Kalna, um, yeah, so Sudhanan Rui still visit Srila Bhakti Rav Puri Gosai Maharaj in Kolkata. Okay. So, if anyone gave Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj a little money or, or a little present to contribute to his service, he would take the time to write about it in his diary. For example, service and donations from Srimati Snigda Palit and Sudevi Didi have been mentioned many times. He also made many references to Dr. S. N. Ghosh and Dr. Na Nalini Ranjan Sen Gupta. Dr. S. N. Ghosh was his godbrother, Sri Sujananda Prabhu. He had great affection and respect for Srila Puri Maharaj, and Srila Puri Maharaj has expressed his gratitude and appreciation for his help and association. About Dr. Nalini Ranjan Sen Gupta, whom he met in his childhood, he has said, I can never forget the way he helped me. Um, so Srila Bhakti Dait Madhav Goswami Maharaj's Chaitanya Goryamat um, in Kolkata was moved to, um, from Raspihari Avenue to 35 Satish Mukherjee Road, Kolkata 26. Also in 1961, Srila Madhav, Madhav Maharaj Bhakti Dait Madhav Goswami Maharaj founded a monthly magazine called Sri Chaitanya Vani. Since Srila Puri Maharaj was still residing at the Kalna Ananta Vasudev Temple, Srila Madhav Maharaj de de um, decided to appoint his dear and intimate godbrother, Sri Sujananda Prabhu, Dr. S. N. Ghosh, who lived close by, as the editor in chief of the Sri Chaitanya Vani magazine. By the request of Srila Madhav Maharaj, all his other godbrothers, Srila Puri Maharaj, sent articles for every. Sorry, I. On the request of all of his other godbrothers, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj sent articles for every issue. Um, his well-written and scholarly articles were a great attraction in the Sri Chaitanya Vani magazine all over India, 
Gaudiya Vaishnavas felt great satisfaction reading his articles, and many wrote letters of appreciation to him. In 1964, after the disappearance of Sri Sujananda Prabhu, Srila Madhav Maharaj requested Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj to be editor-in-chief of the flourishing Sri Chaitanya Bani magazine. Srila Puri Maharaj took this responsibility extremely seriously because he never forgot Srila Prabhupada's special instructions for him. Do not give up the service of the pen. Wow. At that time, Srila Puri Maharaj decided to stay mostly at the Kolkata Sri Chaitanya Gaudiyamat in order to carry out his responsibilities. Okay. I actually, um, I went there to that, that, um, to that Chaitanya Gaudiyamat and I saw right, um, one second. Yeah, I saw right, be, like Takoji is right there and then right below Takoji there's a, um, like a marble thing on the wall, like on, on um, below Takoji. And it says, Dr. S. N. Ghosh and was it Nalini Ranjan? No, I, I can't remember. But no, it says Dr. S. N. Ghosh, um, who is Sujananda Prabhu. So he he helped a lot with... Anyways, so yeah, yesterday was his disappearance day. Um, there's probably more about him in this in this book, but I think we should probably move on to read about Srila Bhakti Rakshak Srila Gosai Maharaj, since we're running out of time. And um, yeah, and also we'll read about Vira Chandra Prabhu. So... All right, so on Haribo Vidyalala Sadidi. Okay, so sharing my screen again. Um, I for right now we can we'll read from um, what is it from my beloved masters by Shila Bhakti Rakshak. Sorry, by Shri Bhakti Vigyan Parati Gosai Maharaj. Whoa, something weird's happening. <laughs> I don't know why it's. Okay, I think I have to close this and open it again. <clears throat> okay, my beloved masters, there. There it is. No. How come? Okay. Sorry. Sorry about this. Here. Okay. So Shri Srimad Bhakti Rakshak Shira Gosai Maharaj Glorification by Shila Bhakti Vigyan Parati Gosai Maharaj. <clears throat> Happily enduring difficulty for the service of Shri Guru. Shri Srimad Bhakti Rakshak Shira Gosai Maharaj and Shishimar Bhakti Hridai Ban Gosai Maharaj once went to Ambala to assist in setting up a spiritual education e exhibition at Kurukshetra as per the desire of Srila Prabhupada. Being unable to find accommodations for themselves, they resorted to spending the night under a bridge where they bared the cold weather by embracing each other for warmth and remembering, and remembering, hey, why is it not going to the next page? and remembering Krishna's pastime in which he spent a night in the forest with Sudama while serving their guru. Wow! <laughs> Amazing! I'm... Wow! Okay. The Natural Humility of Vaishnavas Srila Shira Goswami Maharaj and my Guru Maharaj, then known as Sri Hayagriva Brahmachari, once preached in the city of Madras, now Chennai. At that time, 
a debate between Dr. Radhakrishnan, who, contrary to his name, was a strong proponent of the school of Advaitavad, non-duality or impersonalism, and Dr. Nag Nagaraj Sharma, who, contrary to his name, was a firm promoter of Dvaitavad, duality, <laughs> was published in the English daily paper, The Hindu, in the form of a series of articles. Through these articles, both men put forth arguments in favor of their respective faiths while refuting the other's arguments. This continued for some time until the Dvaitavadis and Advaitavadis of Madras decided to organize a debate between the two men under the chairmanship of a representative um, from the Gaudiya Mat. Whatever the conclusion the chairman would reach was to be considered final and acceptable for all. It's amazing the Gaudiya Mat was given that much respect there in Chennai. And obviously the Gaudiya Mat's not a very impartial... Uh, anyways, that's, that's great. Um, when the local residents approached Guru Maharaj with the proposal to appoint a representative from the Gaudiya Mat Institution as chairman for the debate, he was very pleased and requested Shilashira Gosai Maharaj to accept the chairmanship. In a humble manner befitting a Vaishnav, Shilashira Gosai Maharaj accepted the proposal. In the meantime, Guru Maharaj received a telegram from Srila Prabhupada ordering him to come to Kolkata. When Shilashira Goswami Maharaj heard about Srila Prabhupada's message, he said to Guru Maharaj, O oh, High Griva Prabhu, I will not be able to accept the post of the chairman for the debate if you are absent. Guru Maharaj replied, Although Srila Prabhupada will certainly be pleased if I were um, sorry. Although Srila Prabhupada would certainly be pleased if I were to leave now for Kolkata as he is instructed, I firmly believe that he will be much more pleased to hear that the Gaudiya Mat was awarded the chairmanship of a debate to be held in such a great assembly of dignitaries, even if it results in a slight delay in my reaching Kolkata. On the day of the debate, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Srira Gosai Maharaj was formally appointed as the chairman. In his opening address, he humbly said, Although I am not qualified to hold the post of chairman for this debate, I have accepted the position in order to fulfill the instructions and desires of the Vaishnavs and noble members of the society. When the debate started, Dr. Radhakrishnan spoke first and attempted to establish the superiority of Advaitavad. Afterward, when Dvaitavadi Dr. Nagaraj Sharma was asked to establish his viewpoint, he began his address by saying, Because Vaishnavas are humble by nature, they introduced themselves by saying, Dasosmi, I am your servant. Advaitavadis, however, being unable to appreciate such dignity, are always eager to proudly introduce themselves by saying, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahma. I am the absolute truth. Indirectly referring to the humble conduct of Srila Shira Gosai Maharaj, he then said, Truly speaking, there is no need for Vaishnavas to exhibit their humility in all places and circumstances. After this, Dr. Nagaraj Sharma went on to establish his views on Dvaitavad. Haribo Krishna Mai Didi and Shubhananda Prabhu. At the end of the debate, Shilashira Goswami Maharaj said in his concluding speech as chairman, It is a fact that a person's pride becomes inflated when he associates with those lesser than himself. But such false pride can never enter a person who always remains in the association of transcendental personalities. Just as a father naturally behaves as a senior in front of his son and as a junior in front of his own father, a person who associates with those who have attained the topmost perfection, service to the Supreme Personality, no longer externally demonstrates humility by force. Rather, divine humility naturally manifests in his heart and is reflected in his conduct. But if a person associates with someone inferior to him, then pride is bound to arise in his heart. Uh, we're, uh, we're just talking about this point yesterday in our reading yesterday but this is much more eloquently expressed than I was able to say it. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, really important point. That's how humility comes. Being humble, uh, being humble is not a mechanical process, 
but rather a natural byproduct of spiritual realization. This is, I think, this is Srila Bhaktivigam Parati Goswami speaking again now. Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami has referred to himself by saying, Jagai Madhai Hoite Mui She Papishta Purisher Kita Hoite Mui She Laghishta Mor Nam Shune J Tar Punyakhoi Mor Nam Loi J Tar Papahoi Amon Negrina More Keva Kripakori Eka Nityananda Bino Jagata Bhitore I am more sinful than Jagai and Madhai, and even lower than a worm and stool. The pious activities of that person who hears my name are completely destroyed. Anyone who utters my name commits a sin. Who in this world but Nityananda could show his mercy to such a vile person as me? Srila Rupa Goswami, the foremost authority of, um, of the realm of bhakti, has expressed similar sentiments. Adaropya paradhanam aviveka hatopyaham tvat karunya pratikshosmi prasiddha mai madhava. Although I am a mine of offenses, this is from Stava Mala, Volume 1, from the Pranam Pranay Stava, verse 14. Although I am a mine of offenses, and although I cannot tell right from wrong, I still hope for your mercy. O Madhav, Please be merciful to me. Sri Madhav Sarasati, a Vaishnav Kavi, a poet from South India, has expressed his, his humility as follows Jnana Valambaka Kechit, Kechit Karma Valambaka, Vayam Tu Haridasanam, Padatrana Valambaka. Some are inclined to Gyan, and others are inclined to Karma. We, however, are inclined to take shelter of the shoes of the lotus feet of Sri Hari's servants. By analyzing, oh, maybe this is Sri Hari. Yeah. Let me just see. I, I want to get clear. Okay, so I think this is Sri Hari Goswami still speaking. It just, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, okay. So by analyzing the humble expressions of such great personalities, one can clearly understand um, the actual position of the impersonal Advaitavadis as compared to that of the Dvaitavadi Vaishnavas. The former of the two groups possesses the self-conception of Aham Brahmasmi and Pasha Baddho Bhavit Jiva Pasha Mukta Sada Shiva. A person bound by the ropes of Maya is a Jiva, but when he is released from those bonds, he becomes Sada Shiva. While members of the later of the latter group conceive of themselves in the following manner Majjan Mana Palamidang Madukaita Bhare Mat Pratanya Maranu Graha Esha Eva Twad Britya Britta Paricharaka Britya 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 Sya Britta Miti Mam Smara Lokanata that's from the Mukunda Malastotra, verse 25. O Lokanath, O Lord of all, O slayer of the demons Madhu and Kaitava, please be merciful to me and grant my prayer that you may remember me as a servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of your servant's servant. Okay, so that's how that ended, that assembly. Jai Ho. Exposing, imp exposing Impostors. Once Srila Sridhar Gosai Maharaj and his god brother Sri Swadhikarananda Prabhu, who later became known as Sri Srimad Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj, were preaching in Ambala on the order of Srila Prabhupada. There, they met the superintendent of the Ambala railway station, who repeatedly requested them to meet a so called sadhu proclaiming himself to be Bhagavan. Srila Sridhar Goswami Maharaj explains to the superintendent that it is grossly improper to accept a mortal person as Bhagavan. And Sri Swadhikarananda Prabhu declines by saying, We do not have the time to meet such people. Still, the superintendent strongly insisted. Although they had absolutely no interest in meeting an imposter, 
They relented and accompanied the superintendent to meet the so-called sadhu at the railway station. Arriving there, Srila Srira Goswami Maharaj initiated a conversation by saying, Please introduce yourself to us. The so-called sadhu replied in English, I am Lord Krishna. I am Muhammad. I am Christ. I am Buddha. I am Chaitanya. Srila Srira Goswami, uh, Goswami Maharaj told him, You are speaking to a sensible person. Please speak accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> um, hearing Srila Srila Goswami Maharaj's words, the fraudulent sadhu became irritated and said, Joseph Stalin, the leader of the Soviet Union, is a dog to me. Franklin, Doc, uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt, the president of the United States of America, is a cat to me. <laughs> Seeing their Gurudev becoming angry, his disciples asked Srila Srila Goswami Maharaj, Why are you upsetting Bhagavan? <laughs> The superintendent said, Bhagavan and his devotee are having a conversation. <laughs> Do not interfere. <laughs> Srila Srila Goswami Maharaj then asked the, the imposter, What is the cause of your irritation? Without being goaded or pressed, the imposter himself explained, I sacrificed so much for India's independence, but no one stepped forward to help me financially when my wife fell sick in Delhi. She died as a result. Am I mad that I will continue to sacrifice my life for those who have done nothing to help me, a soldier who fought so diligently for, for their freedom? They have cheated me, and now it is my turn to cheat them. Being shocked to hear this, many of the imposter's prominent guests left one by one. Srila Srila Goswami Maharaj turned to Sri Svadikarananda Prabhu and said, Ja palayate sajivati. Those who discard the association of this wicked person will be saved. All others will be trapped. Srila Srila Goswami Maharaj, a recipient of Srila Prabhupada's mercy, had an uncanny ability to identify impostors, uproot their deception, and expose their true nature to everyone. Defending the Authenticity of Srimad Bhagavatam once, a scholar told Srila Srila Goswami Maharaj, Let's see how many pages are in this. Wow, a lot. Okay, once a scholar told Srila Srila Goswami Maharaj, Many people do not accept Srimad Bhagavatam among the authentic scriptures Sri Vyasadeva manifested. And at, sorry. and at least to some extent, their arguments seem seems logical. The scholar explains, a linguistic comparison between Bhagavatam and Vyasadeva's other scriptures reveals troubling dissimilarities. It is evident that Bhagavatam's modern morphology contrasts with that of the ancient language used by Vyasadeva's other scriptures. Naturally, this leads, to, to, um, this leads many to question not only the era of the Bhagavatam's origin, but its authentic authenticity as well. What is... Um, Huh, it seems like a part is cut out. Anyways. Oh, sorry. No, never mind. What is your opinion on this? Srila Srila Goswami Maharaj's response was extraordinary. He said, Oh, yes, he replied, his words dripping with sarcasm. Srimad Bhagavatam was certainly composed yesterday. He then earnestly asked the scholar, Is antiquity the sole factor by which a scripture's authenticity is to be assessed? Should we not assign greater value to, to a relatively recent text whose gravity and depth is far superior to the ancient texts against, against which it is being compared? Should the potency of the atom bomb, which is undisputedly the deadliest and most powerful weapon ever created, be dismissed dearly due to its re recent invention? He continued, Srimad Bhagavatam is the butter churned from the Bhakti Shastras and Upanishads. The date of its origin is irrelevant to superiority of its depth. Whether ancient or composed yesterday, it remains far superior to the Upanishads. Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur Mahashaya, a prominent personality in the Gaudiya Vaishnav lineage, has stated, 
ಚಾರಿ ವೇದ ದಿ ಭಾಗವತ ನವನೀತ ಮಥಿಲೇನ್ ಶುಕೆ ಖಾಯಿಲೇನ್ ಪರೀಕ್ಷಿತ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಮಧ್ಯಖಂಡ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಒನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ ವೇದಸ್ ಆರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಯೋಗರ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಬಟರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶುಕದೇವ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಟರ್ನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಯೋಗರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಬಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಪರೀಕ್ಷಿತ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ರೆಲಿಷ್ಟ್ ದ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ Srila Srila Goswami Maharaj concluded, An unqualified person's ability to assess the true worth of an, invaluable, of an invaluable, albeit recently created object, is, tes- is a testament to his foolishness. An intelligent person, however, accepts apprenticeship at the feet of a learned, master, sorry, of a learned mentor who can instill in him the ability to assess an object's value based on merit alone. on knowing the unknowable. Srila Sridhar Goswami Maharaj once preached in Bombay, now Mumbai, before the establishment of the Gaudiya Vaishnav, uh, sorry, of, the Gaudi, of a Gaudiya Mat there. Sri M.P. Engineer, the first advocate general of independent India, was at that time the chairman of the Theosoph- Theosophical Society. and he invited Srila Sridhar Goswami Maharaj to speak there at one of the society's gatherings. Because many speakers had been invited, each speaker was asked to keep his speech to a concise 15 minutes. In his speech, Srila Sridhar Goswami Maharaj mentioned that the Supreme Lord Sri Bhagavan is Advai Gyan Paratattva, which means one cannot attain true knowledge about his supremacy simply by one's own endeavors, nor can he be made understood by anyone else. And there's this verse, Naya matma pravachanena labhya na medhaya na bahuna shutena. That's from the Kata Upanishad 1 to the 23. The Supreme Soul can never be obtained by one's intelligence, by delivering sermons, nor by extensively hearing about them, about him. He only reveals himself to whom he gives his mercy to. Like, yeah, to whom he deems fit. Or, I forgot. Is it? Anyways. Upon the conclusion of Srila Sridhar Goswami Maharaj's presentation, Sri MP Engineer posed a question to Srila Maharaj before he could even take his seat. Maharaj, you have just professed Sri Bhagavan to be unknown and unknowable. If this is true, then for what purpose have you given up the material comforts of this world and accepted the renounced order of life, if not to attain him? Srila Sridhar Goswami Maharaj immediately responded, Shri Bhagavan can most certainly be known. Hearing this, Shri MP Engineer good-humoredly said, I must admit that according to my vision, you do not appear to be a, renun- uh, a renunciate in any true sense, because you have instantly changed your stance on this matter, just like a lawyer. <laughs> Shila Shida, oh, so, um, Srila Sridhar Goswami Maharaj, he only mentioned half of the verse, which says the Supreme Soul can never be obtained by one's intelligence, by delivering sermons, nor by extensively hearing about him, but not the second half. Okay. <laughs> Srila Sridhar Goswami Maharaj replied, You had given me a time limit. I was able to express only one viewpoint of a highly profound subject matter, and the allocated time was over before I could mention the other viewpoint. Therefore, I could not complete the description of my desired subject matter in the allotted time. Hearing the words of Srila Sridhar Goswami Maharaj, Sri M.P. Engineer said, You began explaining a highly insightful topic on, in a very beautiful way. Therefore, please take another 15 minutes and complete your presentation on this subject matter. Srila Maharaj then went on to firmly establish the full proper siddhanta. Although the Shastras mention that Sri Bhagavan is the non-dual absolute truth, it is mentioned in the same scriptures that if he... the supreme absolute truth does not possess the ability to if the absolute truth does not possess the ability to make himself known to whomever he desires then his supremacy and his qualities of being limitless and infinite are immediately called into question therefore it is said and now this is the second half of the verse yam evaisha vrinudut yam evaisha vrinute tena labhyas tashaisha atma vrinute tanung swam Okay, so the same verse from Kata Upanishad, second half, 1, 2, 23. 
The Supreme Soul is attainable only by one upon whom he has bestowed his mercy. To such a person, he reveals his personal form. In other words, it is impossible for one to gain knowledge about Bhagavan through one's own endeavors or through the help of someone on the same level of devotion. However, when the Supreme Lord observes in sorry, when the Supreme Lord observes in one the inclination to serve him, he imparts knowledge by which one can understand him, either directly or through one of his associates. Atashi Krishna Namadi Na Bhaved Grahyamindriai Sevon Muke Hijivado Swayam Eva Spuratteda. That's Sri Bhakti Rasamita Sindhu one two uh, two thirty four. The name, form, qualities, and pastimes of Sri Krishna cannot be perceived by the material senses. They become manifest when one's senses, starting with the tongue, are permeated with the desire to render service. Srila Sridhar Goswami Raja's presentation had such a profound effect on Sri MP, MP Engineer that when Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur later visited Bombay, he humbly requested Srila Prabhupada not to deprive the city's residents of his vichar dhara, the line of his the line of philosophical conceptions, and to establish a mat there. Later, as per the instructions of Srila Prabhupada, a property was rented in Bombay to establish a Gaudiya mat, um, from which the preaching of the Gaudiya line in that city was initiated. The messengers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's vani. Once Guru Maharaj, at the time Sri Hayagriva Brahmachari, went along with Shishi Mad Bhakti Sri Rup Siddhanti Goswami Maharaj, then Sri Siddhasurup Brahmachari, and Srila Shira Goswami Maharaj to, the preach, to preach in Silhet, East Bengal, now Bangladesh, where they had been invited to speak at a three day spiritual function. On the first day, Sri Siddhasurup Brahmachari, in his address, made use of very straightforward but harsh and immoderate words while establishing the superiority of the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu over the popular Mayavad philosophies prevalent at that time. He referred to Vivekananda, whose name means one who takes bliss in having intelligence, as Vivekananda, or one who takes bliss in being ignorant. And he referred to Ramakrishna Paramahansa as Ramahansa, or a large but worthless swan. <laughs> Upon hearing these epithets, Many residents of Silhet became irritated. That night, leaflets that denounced the Gaudiamat, sorry, that night leaflets that denounced the Gaudiamat and demanded the cancellation of the function were published and distributed all over town. The next day, Sri Hayagriva Brahmachari met with the with the um, how do you say that word? Convener, convener, the district judge, who expressed his concerns about this uh, about safety. And he said that the, event, that, it, um, that the event had faced such great opposition and so it would be advisable to cancel the remaining two days of the function just to rule out the possibility of any undesirable incident. Sri Hayagriva Brahmachari assured the judge that the speaker who had used incendiary, incendiary words the previous night, he would most definitely not be speaking again and that only he and, Shri, and Shri Srimad Bhakti Rakshak Srira Goswami Maharaj would address the audience. The judge replied, It is on your assurance alone that I will allow the function to continue. I will make all the necessary arrangements for providing increased security, but please be mindful of the content of your harikata. Um, okay. So the next evening, the venue was filled with antagonistic objectors. Sri Hayagriva Brahmachari was the first to address the crowd and he began by praising the hospitality of the Silhet people. After he finished his speech and established his objective, he conceded the podium to Srila, to Srila Sridhar Gosai Maharaj. During his presentation, Srila Maharaj said, Our Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, has taught us that in our preaching, we are delivering the message of Swayam Bhagavan Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. Our only purpose in coming here is to deliver through fearless yet fair speech the vani, the vani, the teachings that incessantly flow from Srimad Bhagavatam, the natural commentary on Vedanta Sutra, as it has been presented by Sriman Mahaprabhu and our line of Guru Varga, 
which includes Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, Srila Jiva Goswami, Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, and others who make up our Bhagavat Parampara. We are not here to preach the um, sorry, we are not here to preach with the apprehension and shyness of a lady hiding her face behind a veil. <laughs> what to speak of the philosophical doctrines of personalities like Sri Shankaracharya, Jam Jaimini, Patanjali, Kana Kanada, and so on. The ideology manifested by Swayam Bhagavan Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu is unparalleled and vastly superior to the ideologies established by even the, four, the previous four Vaishnavacharyas, Sri Ramanuja, Sri Madhvacharya, Sri Nimbaditya, and Sri Vishnu Swami. Through his teachings, he has highlighted the shortcomings of such doctrines and has conclusively defeated all erroneously fabricated philosophies. Therefore, in our presentation of Sriman Mahaprabhu's ideology, how is it possible that the ideologies of persons like Vivekananda, Ramakrishna Paramahansa, and Bhandarakar will not be contested? Moreover, we are simply messengers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Our duty is merely to deliver his teachings. If anyone in this assembly has any objections, he may kindly address them to Sriman Mahaprabhu, Sri Vedavyas, or Srila Rupa Goswami. Although we have unflinching faith in their Vichardhara, their line of ideology, we will undoubtedly surrender to any person who can present an ideology superior to that presented by Sriman Mahaprabhu. But if such a person is not present in this world, what intelligent being would be unwilling to follow or feel uninspired by such a highly auspicious spiritual path as the one described by Sriman Mahaprabhu and his followers? Srimad Bhagavatam has clearly described Sri Krishna as Swayam Bhagavan. Ete Changsa Kala Pungsa Krishnastu Bhagavan Swayam at Srimad Bhagavatam 1.3.28 All avatars are either plenary portions or portions of plenary portions of the Supreme Person, but Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. Furthermore, Krishna himself has stated in Bhagavad Gita that he is the ultimate object of surrender in such verses as Sarva Dharmam Parityaja Ma Mekam Sharanam Raja <clears throat> That's Srimad Bhagavad Gita 1866. Completely abandoning all dharma, take shelter of me alone. I will free you from the reactions of your sins. Do not limit. Manmana bhavamar bhakto madhyaji mam namaskuru mam evaishasi satyam te prati jane priyosime. That's Srimad Bhagavad Gita, 1865. Offer your mind to me, become my devotee, worship me, and offer pranam to me. By this you shall attain me. I swear this truth to you, because you are dear to me. And Ananyas Chintayanto Mam Ye Jana Paripashate Tesham Nitya Bhyuktanam Yoga Kshemam Vahamyaham. At Srimad Bhagavad Gita 922. For those who are devoid of other desires, who are always absorbed in contemplation of me and who always worship me, I personally carry their necessities and preserve what they presently have. Therefore, what benefit is there in accepting the ideology of Ramakrishna Paramahansa, who advocates the worship of devatas, the demigods? Such worship is averse to Srimad Bhagavatam which has firmly established yata toror mula that's Srimad Bhagavatam 4.31.14 yata toror mula nishechanena tripyanti tat skanda bujo poshakaha prano paharach chayatendriyanam tatai vasarvar hanam achutejya Just as pouring water on the root of a tree nourishes its trunk branches, leaves, and sprigs, and as giving food to the stomach nourishes all the senses and bodily limbs, all the demigods are automatically worshipped when one worships Sri Achuta, Bhagavan. The philosophy of Vivekananda is Jive Prema Kori Je Jana She Jana Sheviche Ishwar. One who has love for living entities actually serves the Supreme Lord. However, we see that his followers kill and eat animals, and we must therefore conclude that this slogan, 
that in this slogan, the word jiva, as used by Vivekananda, refers only to human beings. But the true meaning of the word jiva refers to all living entities. You should all deeply consider these points. There is no need for us to say anything further. You are all free to make complaints against any imperfections in our methods of delivery. But you must know for certain that the philosophy we have presented remains immaculately pure at all times, without the slightest trace of contamination. After Srila Sridhar Goswami Maharaj concluded his speech, the audience responded with a thunderous applause. Indeed, they were truly pleased, and they requested the organizers to extend the function for an additional 15 days. In this way, the preaching of Sriman Mahaprabhu's Vani in the city of Silhet was a, great, was a great success. As Silhet was well known as a city with good quality lime, the residents in their appreciation arranged for a wagon load to be used in the service of whitewashing the walls of Sri Chaitanya Mat, the temples at Yoga Pit, and other buildings in Sriman Mahaprabhu's uh, um, Sri Dham Mayapur. What time is it? It's 8.18. Hmm. I want to see, I wanted to read about Veera Chandrabhu. And so, let's see how long it is. I'm just opening up this, uh, what is it? Um, Sri Chaitanya and his associates. I'm going to see if this is really long. Then maybe we can read this later. Um, let's see how long it is. Can we read this in 10 minutes? Yes, we can, easily. Okay. So, Sri Vira Chandra Prabhu, Vira Bhadra. So, this is by Shila, um, this is from the book Sri Chaitanya and his Associates by Srila Bhakti Balabhatirtha Goswami Maharaj. And I think I will continue reading from this, um, this, uh, what is it, My Beloved Masters by Srila Bhakti Vigam Parati Goswami Maharaj. I'll continue reading from this um, later this evening and we can finish this chapter. Yeah. Shri Vira Chandra Prabhu, Vira Bhadra. Sankarshanasya yo vyuha payo bhdi shai namaka sa eva vira chandra bhut chaitanya bhinna vigraha. Let's make the text a little bigger once again. Oh, it's the biggest it can be, okay. Kshira Dakshai Vishnu, the expansion of Sankarshan, who sleeps on the ocean of milk, has become Vira Chandra, the son of Nityananda Prabhu. He is non different from Chaitanya himself. That's from Gaur Ganada Stipika, verse 67. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, is the origin of unlimited expansions and avatars. He is the, avita the avatari. His first expansion is the root Sankarshan, or Balaram. This same Balaram appeared with Lord Chaitanya as Nityananda Prabhu. Balaram's expansion, Maha Sankarshan, has his abode in the Vaikuntha planets, and he in turn expands as the Purusha avatars in the work of creation of the universe. First as Karanadakshai Mahavishnu, who lies in the causal ocean, then as Garbhadakshai Vishnu, who lies in the ocean within the individual universes, and finally as Kshiradakshai Vishnu, who not only lies in the ocean of milk, but is the director of the individual universe and is present as the indweller of every living being within the universe. Also known as Aniruddha, oh, sorry. Also known as Aniruddha, Kshiradakshai Vishnu appeared in the course of Mahaprabhu, of Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya's pastimes as Shri, Shri, uh, Vira Bhadra Prabhu, the son of Lord Nityananda Prabhu and his energy, Vasudha Devi. Wow, very interesting. So Vira Bhadra Prabhu is Aniruddha, who is Kshiradaksha Vishnu, Paramatma. Krishnadas Kaviraj Gosami has written in his Chaitanya Charitamrita that Vira Bhadra is the best of all the branches of, of the Nityananda Prabhu trunk of the Chaitanya tree. This is from Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila, chapter 11, verse 56. 
The best of all Nityananda Prabhu's branches is Virabhadra Goswami. The sub-branches which grew out of his are unlimited in number. As with all Vishnu Tattvas, the three energies, Shri, Bhu, that's Bhakti, and Nila, also known as Lila Shaktis, were all present in Virabhadra Prabhu's life. His Shri Shakti was named Srimati, who appeared in the village of Jamatpur in the Hooghly district as the daughter of Yadunandanacharya and uh, Vidyun, Vidyun, Mala, Vidyun Mala, Lakshmi. Yadunandan's wife, Lakshmi, was extremely chaste. So this is from Bhakti Ratnakar 13, 251-253. Yadunandan's wife, Lakshmi, was extremely chaste and devoted to her husband. Two daughters were born to her, Srimati and Narayani, both of whom were startlingly beautiful. At Janava's behest, the fortunate Brahman gave both of his daughters in marriage to Virabhadra. Okay. Yadunandan's wife, Lakshmi. Their daughters. Interesting. Though Virabhadra Prabhu belongs to the category of Vishnu Tattva, he performed his pastimes like a devotee. The greatest branch coming out of the sorry, the greatest branch coming out of the trunk named Nityananda Prabhu is Virabhadra Goswami, who who also has innumerable branches and sub branches. Wait, this is uh, what I'm reading right now is a quote from Chaitanya Chaitamrita, uh, Adi 11 verses 8 to 12. So there, there's, um, yeah. So the greatest branch coming from the trunk of Nitin, named Nityananda Prabhu is Virabhadra Goswami, who has innumerable branches and sub-branches. It is not possible to describe them all. Although he is the lord of the creation, Virabhadra Prabhu presented himself as a great devotee. Though transcendental to all Vedic injunctions, he strictly followed the Vedic precepts. The pre prescripts, sorry. Those, uh, though the power of God was operating within him, out of sight of the world, sorry, All, though the power of God was operating within him out of sight to the world, he showed no pride. He is the main pillar holding up the, uh, the edifice of devotional service to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is by the glorious mercy of Sri Virabhadra Gosai that people all over the world now have the, they have the chance to chant the names of Chaitanya and Nityananda Prabhus. I therefore take shelter of the lotus feet of Virabhadra Goswami, for by his mercy all desires are fulfilled. Sri Narahari Chakravarti Thakur has written about the following about Virabhadra Prabhu and his Bhakti Ratnakar. Virabhadra Prabhu the son of Nityananda Prabhu was an ocean of virtue and redeemer of the world. There is no limit to his glories, so who can sufficiently glorify him? He is famed as the branch of Nityananda Prabhu. The root of all, jo the root of all joy, he is sometimes known as Virabhadra and sometimes as Virachandra. If anyone sees him even once, he will give up everything and make his lotus feet his all in all. That's from Bhakti Ratnakar 9, 413-414 and 420-421. Virabhadra Prabhu took initiation from Janava Devi. In his Anubhashya, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur has written, Virabhadra Goswami had had three disciples who were later celebrated as his sons, Gopi Janavalava, Rama Krishna, and Rama Chandra. The youngest, Ramachandra, belonged to Kardaha. The eldest disciple, Gopijana Vallabha, was a resident of a village known as Lata, near the Mankor railway station in the district of Burdwan. The second, Ramakrishna, lived near Malda in a village named Gayash Gayashpur. According to the 13th chapter of the Bhakti Ratnakar, Virabhadra Prabhu took permission from his mother, Vasudha, to go to Vrindavan. Upon arriving there, he performed Rajdam Parikrama with the blessings of Bugarbha Goswami and Sri Jiva Goswami. The old Shamasundar temple in Kardaha has a manuscript of Srimad Bhagavatam that is hand copied by Virabhadra Prabhu. Oh, neat, I didn't know that. Some holds that this was actually written by Nityananda Prabhu himself. Virabhadra Prabhu personally brought a piece of stone from which the deities Shamasundar, Radhavalab, and Nanda Dulal became manifest. 
These deities are still worshipped in Kardaha. I went there recently. I have pictures of them somewhere. Uh, I can try to look for them afterwards. These three deities, so beautiful. So, so, so beautiful. Very sweet. The ghat where this stone, um, sorry, the ghat where this stone arrived is known as Shamasundar Ghat. Virabhadra Prabhu established the custom of celebrating the birth of Nityananda Prabhu at Kardaha. During his time, the offerings during the festival were prepared using 60 kgs of rice and equal amounts of other materials. The current managers of the Kardaha temple tell many other legends about the life of um, Virabhadra Goswami. The date of Virabhadra's appearance is given as Kartik Krishna Navami. The Gaudiya Vaishnav Abhidhan, however, gives the date as Agra Agrahayan Shukla Chaturdashi. So, Shri Virabhadra Prabhu Ki Jai Tadiya Shubha Avirbhav Titi Ki Jai Alright, so that is our reading for today. It is now 8.28, two minutes till our, the time we usually end. So, I, as I mentioned before, I will go live again later this evening. Um, I'd like to go live at 5 p.m. That, that time works out good for me. It's still light then and it starts to get dark at that time. But we'll see because um, the Singhasan that... Um, actually, um, some devotees here contributed to the Singhasan. Well, it is finally arriving today. Um, this, the, it's re ready now. We have a guest coming this morning, so that's why I can't go and get it now. So I'm going to have to go and get it in the evening time. So depending on when I go do that, um, yeah, then uh, then we'll read more about Srila Srila Goswami Maharaj. We'll read from my beloved masters, more of these pastimes. And also it'd be nice to read an article by him. His articles are, for, to me, are some of the most nourishing things, like most nourishing devotional writing there is. Um, so, yeah, all right, um, we'll end with a kirtan and then maybe we should sing, let's sing, um, what's the song, uh, that Shri Shri Goswami wrote, uh, Jaya Sachi Nandana Sura Muni Vandana. <laughs> I've only sung it once and that was on here live. Um, and I still didn't really know a melody for it, but it was pretty simple though. I'm just sharing my browser. Okay. Let's open up a new tab. Jaya Sachi Nandana Sura Muni Vandana. Let's see if that brings it up. Yep. Here it is. And the song is pretty easy to understand, so I'm not going to read the translation. Um, let's see. Maybe let's open this up in Reader. Here. Yeah, that's better, right? Jaya Shachi Nandana Sura Muni Vandana Bhava Bhaya Kandana Jaya He Jaya Hari Kirtana Nartana Vartana Kali Malakartana Jaya He Nayana Purantara Vishwarupa Snehatara Vishwambara Vishvera Kalyana Ajaya Lakshmi Vishnu Priya Vishwambara Priya Hiya Jaya Priya Kinkara Ishana Shri Sita Shri Sita Advita Rai Malini Shivasa Jaya Jaya Chandra Shekh 
Kadatharacharya Jaya Nityananda Rai Kadatharajai Jai Jaya Haridasa Namacharya Amorari Mukunda Jai Premanidhi Mahashai Jaya Jata Prabhu Parash Parishada Bandhi Sabakara Pai Adame Rakripa Hoi Bandhi Sabakara Pai Adame Rakripa Hoi Bhakti Sapashar Prabhu Pai Bhakti Sapashar Prabhu Pai Jaya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Bol Hare Bol Hare Bol Nitai Gaur Hare Bol Nitai Gaur Hare जाए शिष्य गुरु गरंग गंधार्विक की धारी शिष्य राधा विनोद विहारी जो की जाए श्री गोविंद गोपीनाथ मरण महान जो की जाए नित्य लीला प्रविष्टम विष्णु पार रशतर रशतर शिष्मार भक्ति ब्रांत नारायण गुसाई महाराज श्री गुरु देव की जाए नित्य लीला प्रविष्टम विष्णु पार रशतर रशतर शिष्मार भक्ति ब्रांत भक्ति विरांत स्वयं महाराज श्री प्रभु पार की जाए नित्य लीला प्रविष्ट विष्णु पार अशत रशत शिष्मार भक्ति रक्षक श्रीधर गोसाई महाराज की जाए जाए तो दिए शुभ आविर्भाव तिथि की जाए नित्य लीला प्रविष्ट महाभागवत श्री गोर किशोर दास बाबू जी न साई नित्य लीला प्रविष्ट विष्णु पार अशत रशत शिष्मार भक्ति प्रज्ञान केशव गोसाई महाराज की जाए नित्य लीला प्रविष्ट विष्णु पार अशत रशत शिष्मार भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती को साईं प्रभु पार की जाए नित्य लल्लो प्रविष्ट महाभागवत श्रद्धा की श्रद्धा स्पावजी महाराज की जाए नित्य लल्लो प्रविष्ट वैष्णव सर्वभूमि श्रद्धा जगन्नाथ स्पावजी महाराज की जाए श्री रूपानंद कोरिया गुरु वर्ग की जाए श्री रूपसनातन भट्टरागुनाथ श्री जीव गोपाल पद्मदासुगुनाथ शारगुसाईं प प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री आद्वैत कदाधार शिवासरी गौर भक्त वृंद की जाए श्री क्षेत्र मंडल गौर मंडल ब्रज मंडल मथुर वृंदावन धाम की जाए सर्व अभिष्ट प्रदात गिरिराज महाराज की जाए श्री राधा कुंद श्याम कुंद की जाए श्री मुन देवी गंगा देवी की जाए श्री तुलसी महारानी वृंद देवी की जाए श्री भक्ति देवी की जाए श्री पूर्णमासी योग माया की जाए श्री गोपेश्वर महादेव की जाए श्री हरिनाम संकीर्तन की जाए अनंत कोटि वैष्णा वृंद की जाए जय श्री भक्ति रक्षक श्री रघुसाई महाराज अविर्भाव तिथि की जय जय श्री वीर चंद्र प्रभु की जय तदीय शुभ अविर्भाव तिथि की जय श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय समागत गौर भक्त वृंद की जय श्री नीताय गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि गो वृंदाय तुलसी देवाय प्रियाय केशवाशा कृष्ण भक्ति पद देवी सत्यवताय नमो नमः वंचा कल्पतरु भ्यास्ता कृपा सिंधु भये वचा पतितानं पावने भ्यो वैष्णवे भ्यो नमो नमः कंदवा प्रणाम स्तिर दबोरीस हरे कृष्णा शुभनंद प्रभु एंड कृष्णा माई दीदी एंड हु आल्सेस देर विद्यलाला से दीदी रुक्मिनी दीदी एंड एनीबडी एल्स हु इज देर दंदवा प्रणाम सो ऑल ऑफ यू एंड आई सी यू इधर लेटर द or for those of you in the West in the morning time. Otherwise, I'll see you all tomorrow to continue our reading from Dhammadarashtakam. All right, Dandavat pronounce everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Harivo. Harivo Rukmini Diti. Harivo Krishnamaya Diti. Shubhananapu. Dandavat pronounce.